Kansas State typically is one of the most fun teams to watch in college football, and they've been an entertaining group to cheer for if you are a Kansas State fan because they embody that underdog role so well. This year will be a little bit different. With new changes coming to the Big 12, Kansas State is actually one of the favorites. We'll see how they do with that kind of pressure, with those kinds of expectations in this deep dive, as well as much more. Before we do that, though, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way in helping the channel out. It goes a long way in helping the deep dive series continue. It's been a really fun series, and so far, you all have liked it a lot. So make sure you're subscribed, like the video, share the video, and let's dive into Kansas State. We start with, obviously, Chris Kleiman. Kleiman has done a great job of taking over for Bill Snyder. I think that when you follow up a legendary coach, it's tough to continue that success. And Kleiman's done a great job of continuing that success and finding that he has his own spin on the culture, but keeping the Kansas State way. You're continuing to win games with underrated talent and hidden gems, if you will. And the coaching staff has done a good job of continuing that success. And obviously, losing your offensive coordinator and Colin Klein is a huge loss coming into this year. But I think that this staff believes in what Connor Riley is going to do. You also have a defense that should be a good group in 2024 as well. The offense was explosive last year. You had a number of players that stepped up, and it was kind of weird to see Kansas State back to being this kind of an explosive level. It was kind of, you haven't seen that in a, in a little bit, but it was really fun to watch, and I think that this will be a fun group to watch once again. And if the, everything goes to, as planned, you're looking at a, a team that's going to compete for that conference championship, and we'll find ways – to repeat what they did last year or even improve upon what they did last year. The transfer portal was surprisingly heavier than what I expected for Kansas State, but that's what happens when you have certain needs at certain positions. Losing Will Howard, I think a lot of people are okay with that departure, but that means that you had to find some depth. Bringing in Taquan Roberson was a very interesting addition. I think that he felt, uh, fits in what this staff wants from the quarterback position. So. He'll be a good backup for Avery Johnson. Getting Dylan Edwards was a huge addition. That's an explosive weapon for Colorado that is a, a sophomore this year. He'll be really fun to watch. And when you look at what the defense brought in, you brought in a number of, of names where you probably don't know who they are, but they're going to be contributors, whether that's at as a starter or as a rotational player. And, and uh, you have a number of players coming in that fit that role, both on offense and defense. You have a couple of starters, but you also have some guys that are looking to maybe extend their career or revive their career. A guy like Dante Sivas kind of fits in that category. Some of the losses they sustained definitely hurt guys like Kobe Savage and Will Lee in, in the secondary. Those were two big losses. No matter who you are, you can't really deny that those two were losses you didn't want to see happen. Trayshawn Ward leaving hurt a little bit until they got Dylan Edwards. I think that they felt pretty good even without Treshawn Ward. Ward is obviously a solid player for Kansas State last year and obviously takes his talents to the transfer portal. But again, this running back position appears to be set. So let's just dive into that because we'll start with DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards. We'll talk about those two first and then we'll go to the quarterback. A little bit different for this video. DJ Giddens, over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. Dylan Edwards, the 321 yards and one touchdown all was pretty much within that first month of the season. We kind of saw him explode uh, against TCU. And then from there, it was kind of, you didn't really hear from him, but Colorado was just kind of all over the place. So I wouldn't put too much weight into that just because he is that explosive. He is that talented and someone who, if you're looking for Kansas state has looked for guys that are a little bit undersized or maybe not your traditional style player and Dylan Edwards fits that role. When you look at what they had in Deuce Vaughn, Dylan Edwards can be exactly that. You can be that player that can and run the ball in between the trenches, maybe not going to be the most physical, but has the speed and explosiveness to definitely put stress on a defense. But also you can get him involved in the passing attack as well. Get him out in space and let his speed do a lot of damage. Nina Gins is going to be more that downhill runner, fits into what Kansas State wants to do, to in, including – being physical and finding ways to do damage and really break the will of the team that they're facing. The rushing attack is going to be a big, obviously, factor 
for this offense. They are going to be a focal point for that offense. And it's a reason why they finished 12th in rushing last year, almost 205 yards per game. And you should expect that this rushing attack will continue doing the same thing this year. Now behind them is where things get a little bit interesting. You don't quite have the depth maybe that you did at one point, but you have some interesting talent. I think Joe Jackson is a Richard freshman that this staff is intrigued by. Uh, but James White is someone who had a little bit of, of contribution, but it's still relatively unproven. So, but the depth behind the running backs maybe isn't as proven as you'd like, but I think that the two guys you have in, in place starting off, you feel pretty good about that. You also feel pretty good about the quarterback position. Avery Johnson stepped up when uh, Will Howard was not in the lineup. And this is someone who this staff and this fan base expect big things from. 2,600 yards, 24 touchdowns in his first full year. I can't even really say full year, I guess, but in a pretty full year, a year in which he got plenty of experience, 6'2", 192 pounds. I'm really excited to see what he does now that it's his job and no one else is going to take that from him. Yes, we talked about bringing in Taquan Roberson from UConn. That is obviously a solid addition, but not one that makes you worry that Avery Johnson might lose the job. You also have uh, Blake Barnett, the bright star of the future. I think that this staff really likes what they see in him. And the, the big thing with, you know, in the transfer portal era is, are you going to be able to keep him around? Are you going to keep him satisfied, get him enough time on the field, even while he's young and still learning? Can you keep him satisfied? Can you keep him on campus? I think Kansas State does a really good job of emphasizing culture, and that's a big thing for this team because you expect certain players – to contribute down the road. But again, you have to give them opportunities at a certain point. So that'll be one thing to keep an eye on down the road. But this year, it feels like they're in good hands with Avery Johnson running the show. You don't have too many concerns about what the quarterback position will look like, even with Will Howard going to Ohio State. So I feel like this offense is still going to be a solid group, a group that can put up points, that can move the ball very efficiently. It's just going to come down to what does this passing attack look like? Now, this is a group of wide receivers and tight ends that will fly under the radar. Again, that's exactly where Kansas State wants to be. They want to be in that position of certain guys don't get the love that maybe they deserve, or they just haven't proven it yet. And that's perfect, especially for a group that is considered one of the best in the Big 12. This is a group that is expected to compete for a conference championship. And you need to do that through the air as much as you need to do that on the ground. You need to be able to move the ball. So getting a guy like Keegan Johnson back is solid. Again, I think that some of these guys obviously have something to prove. 277 yards, uh, 227 yards, excuse me, and two touchdowns isn't exactly something that you're going to brag about. But the talent is there and the ability is there to be explosive. And I think that if he finds good chemistry with Avery Johnson, you're going to be in good hands. Jace Brown is back. He is probably the biggest contributor of the guys that we'll talk about today. 437 yards, average 16.2 yards per carry. Now, here's the other thing. Kansas State isn't going to be a, a air raid kind of, you know, an air raid team that's going to throw the ball a, a bunch of times. They are going to be selective and efficient with their passing attack. So you're not going to have a ton of opportunities. So guys like Brown averaging over 16 yards per catch puts him in arguably the front seat, uh, the driver's seat of the attempts that Avery Johnson will look for downfield. A guy like Dante Cephas is someone who can prove his worth as well. 246 yards and two touchdowns. The wide receivers don't necessarily have someone who is a certified threat yet. This Brown is probably the closest thing to that. But there's plenty of talent there. The guys behind them, Trey Spivey, only one catch for 24 yards. Jaden Jackson, uh, 252 yards and two touchdowns. Sterling Lockett is a promising sophomore, so you have options. It's just a matter of who is going to be that option for Avery Johnson, who will be able to step up and show their worth. The tight end position, another group of underrated players. When you lose a guy like Ben Sinat, you're obviously going to have certain players that are under the radar and relatively unknown. Garrett Oakley, 154 yards and two touchdowns, the most productive tight end on the roster. Will Swanson, 65 yards and, and a touchdown. And, and Braden Lofton, an, another sophomore that the staff really likes. So 
you have a couple of options, but it's kind of a wait and see sort of thing with the tight end position. But if you look at the track record for Kansas State, you know that they're in good hands. You know that this shouldn't be too much of a concern. And obviously, you still have to find those guys, but there's not really much to be worried about if you're a Kansas State fan. The same thing kind of can be said about the offensive line. There's less concern about the offensive line, but you you know you kind of have to expect a, a solid group of players, and even bringing in a guy like Easton Kilty from North Dakota, a guy who ha- hasn't been in the culture for too long, but with the guys that they have coming back, you're feeling pretty good about that. He'll line up opposite of Carver Willis, a guy who also has plenty of experience. Guilty uh, is someone who has 33 starts. Willis only has seven, but you feel pretty good about his status there. And then the interior is full of, uh, of talent that has some experience to a certain level. And the guards don't have starts under their belts. So Andrew Langang and Taylor Poitier, you're looking at two guys that can really step up in a big way and take on new roles. But the staff feels pretty good about where they're at. And then Hadley Panzer. 36 games of experience, 29 starts. The center position is so important to this offense this year just because of what they need to have happen. And if your offense is going to take steps forward, the offensive line obviously plays a huge role in that, but the center position is someone that's going to be on on everyone's radar uh, on top of topic of conversation for this offensive line. Behind them is really where things get interesting in terms of you don't have a ton of experience. Sam Hecht has the most experience of anybody that we'll talk about in that second group. Uh, But I think a lot of people have their eyes on Camden Beebe, the brother of when you're looking at Kansas State players, you have a number of talented players that have come and gone. And it's tough to replace a guy like Cooper Beebe. So the fact that that Camden is coming to Kansas State and he's just as massive as his brother was, he could be someone that steps up and plays at one of the guard positions. I think that he has learned quite a bit from his brother. He has that advantage, and he just needs to prove it. He's a young player who is looking to step up, and the guard position is one that's probably going to be open for competition. You you have plenty of players that can step up and play. Camden BB is going to be one of them. It's just a matter of can he steal one of those starting spots right now, or is it going to take a little bit of time as the season progresses? Uh, when you look at this offense as a whole, there shouldn't be a, a big step back if you even do take a step back. I think this is, should still be a solid group. I think that this group has plenty of talent, plenty of potential, and they are ready to once again prove that they can take things to the next level. When you are expected to do something that you – haven't done in what well, except for the, the two years ago winning the conference title you're back in that position can you handle that pressure um, i think that this group is set especially offensively so it's really just uh how much can they do early in the season how much time do they need it to gel and the offense looks like they should be in good hands there's just a couple things that obviously need to get sorted out. The defense is probably the group that has to improve the most. And that being said, this is a group that was good or average, I think, at certain statistical categories. And everything's going to start up front. You have to find a way to be more disruptive. And guys like Brendan Mott will lead the charge in that regard. 27 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss. Uh, I think that this this is a group that's going to fly under the radar because everyone knows that their linebackers uh, will be a solid group. The secondary should be a solid group once again, too, uh, even with some of the departures. But you have the front and the back end probably have the big biggest questions surrounding them, and you need guys like Brendan Mott, who's experienced, to step, step up. Cody Stuffelbean is going to line up opposite of him, another player who has some experience and it needs to be more disruptive. And it'll be really interesting to see how they handle that cha- that challenge and how they're able to exactly to become more disruptive because the edge obviously plays a huge role there, but this is more going to be a unit-wide effort to be more disruptive, but things typically start up front. You also have some newer talent up the middle as well. 
Uso Siumalo will be a big emphasis on big at 6'3", 339 pounds factor in stopping the run. I really like what he is capable of doing. I think that he'll be really fun to watch. Damian Nilalio is another one to keep an eye on behind him. Uh, Chidi Obiazor, uh, you have plenty of talent. It's just how much of that talent can be turned into production because the defensive line, I think that has experienced some various levels of success over the last couple of years and has had some really fun players to watch. You don't necessarily have that proven guy, that star that you've had in the past. So somebody needs to step up and fill that role. Who that's going to be, I think this coaching staff is still trying to figure that out. But you do have options. You do have plenty of talent. And it's just a matter of, again, becoming more disruptive and finding ways to slow down the opposing offense because you are inheriting some really explosive teams and some very physical teams. So this is going to be a challenging year for everyone, and Kansas State is no exception. The the linebackers are set. I think that when you're looking at, even with some of the losses they've sustained, getting someone like Austin Moore back is huge. He is someone who flew under the radar heading into last year and produced at a high level. 63 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, one fumble recovery. He is someone who is a proven weapon, a proven leader for this group, has plenty of experience. He's joined by Desmond Purnell, who's coming back. Uh, another productive player, 51 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss. Did a little bit of everything for this defense, a little bit uh, more of a factor in various different aspects. That'll be a good duo to have coming back. Alec Marenko comes in from New Mexico, and he will be someone that is expected to be more of a factor even so than he was at New Mexico. I think that this is a new challenge for him coming from the Mountain West to the Big 12. So keep an eye on him. And behind them, there's a couple options that are really intriguing. Bo Palmer, 25 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, could be someone that factors in to one of those three positions. And then you have Austin Romain, 23 tackles, three tackles for loss. Behind them, though, is where things are drop off a little bit in terms of production, but you still have good talent. And again, it's all about how this staff has been recruiting and the guys that they bring in. They have guys who fit this culture. They have guys who are buying in and are sold on what Lyman and the staff are selling. And that's a big thing, especially in the transfer portal era to get everyone bought in and knowing exactly what each person needs to do is huge. And the secondary will help with that as well. Jacob Parrish had a big year and probably flies under the radar because people are talking about the departures of Kobe Savage and Will Lee. Had four interceptions last year, 44 tackles, nine passes defended. He is the next star for this Wildcats secondary. That is someone who is going to be a huge factor. And then on the opposite side, Keenan Barber has a big opportunity because everyone knows what Parrish is capable of doing. So that means that you're going to see the ball a little bit more than the other side is. And if he can't handle it, then they obviously have options behind him. But it'll be fun to see him step up in a big, big way. Had some experience last year, and now he's looking to inherit a new challenge as well. So guys like Justin James could be ready to go. You have a couple uh, of other guys behind him as well. You have Tyler Neelum and Donovan McIntosh that could step up if needed there. The safety position is interesting. You have VJ Payne coming back. You get Jack Favris and Marquis Sig- Seigel. You're looking at three guys that maybe fly under the radar in terms of people knowing who they are, but at the same time, that is a great place for those three to be. Again, it's we talked about it earlier. Kansas State thrives when they're flying under the radar, and they have a lot of guys that fit that description, especially on the defensive side of the ball. That's huge. That's going to leave a chip on their shoulder. That's going to allow them to play at a different level because they know people are doubting them. And that's huge for a secondary that is looking to replace two really good players, but also a defense that wants to take a step forward, wants to take a step forward and wants to prove that they're not as underrated as people think they are. Now, when you look at what this team is good at versus the concerning part of their team, the strengths to me are Pretty obvious uh, when you go through some of these 
Um, uh, strengths and concerns. Quarterback to me is a strength, especially the, the addition of Taquan Roberson. That is a strength to me because I don't think that you lose a ton if Avery Johnson goes down. Running back is set as well. You might have a concern about some of the depth behind them, but overall, I think that position is also set. Linebacker to me is set. Uh, I think that's good. That's a good group. Uh, and you put secondary on here as well, but I think losing Kobe Savage and Will Lee puts a little bit of a dent where it's not in the concerns category, but you're also not going to list it as a strength. The offensive line, I think specifically the guard position might be a little bit of a concern. Again, you have plenty of talent there to put guys in and you, know, you can't really replace Cooper Beebe, but you have guys that will be able to step up and fill those roles. But I think for now, until further notice, you might be a little bit concerned simply based off of the lack of experience there. Defensive line depth is probably the next concern to me. You have some players that could step up, but do you have a group that's deep enough to handle life in the trenches? Because again, you're adding teams like Utah that are going to be very physical running the football. You also had teams like Arizona, which isn't any different than what this team has seen before. You've seen explosive offenses, spread offenses, and Kansas State is no exception to that. But I think that you have to have guys that can play. You have to at least be too deep at every position. And I don't necessarily know if right now Kansas State has that. Wide receiver is also a concern. When you looked at that list, Jace Brown's probably the only one where you feel comfortable. Everyone else is kind of even in that proven or prove it category. So that's another group to keep an eye on. The X factor to me is the defensive front. Again, if you find that you have depth, then Kansas State is golden. If they find that they don't have the depth or the, the ceiling isn't as good as they thought, then maybe that plays a factor as well. So we'll keep an eye on that for sure. And, uh, and it's going to be fun to watch Kansas State. This is a team that expects big things and the schedule kind of reflects that the over under for them is nine and a half wins. And when you look at what they have upcoming, it's easy to see why that number is so high. The schedule starts off, I think fairly favorable. I think when you're looking at what you could have, you're, you're looking at, there are definitely worse schedules to have. Right. That being said, it's it's still going to be difficult. I think it's still going to be a, a tough road regardless of who you play. UT Martin at home is, uh, I think, a, a win. That uh, shouldn't be too concerning. At Tulane could be a little bit interesting. They're going through a coaching change, but that's a game Kansas State's definitely capable of winning, even if it's on the road. Arizona home, you get a big one right off the bat. Arizona is one of those other teams that is expected to yeah. compete for – a conference title so that will let's start things off that will kind of set the tone for who is ahead in that race at BYU BYU is not as good as they probably could be but that is still going to be tough a tough game on the road and then you get another massive one Oklahoma well, really this next stretch is pretty rough the, the next four games Oklahoma State at home another team that's competing for a conference championship not Colorado who knows what Colorado will be by that point we will see, but if they're playing really well, that could be a tough game. At West Virginia is going to be tough, especially because it's right before the Kansas game. So you have a rivalry game right before that, or right after that, excuse me, and you have to travel to West Virginia. That is going to be a tough stretch. After that, though, I don't have a ton of concerns, except for maybe the Iowa State game to end the year. At Houston, Arizona State, and Cincinnati should be three wins for this team if they're playing at the level that they are capable of. Uh, so when you look at the schedule, ceiling is definitely 12-0. and I don't see how this team, if they're playing how they could, I think this is a team that could go 12-0. and They have the talent to do it. I could see how you could argue 11-1, and but to me, if you're playing at a high level and you found those pieces, 12-0 are definitely possible. The nice thing, too, is that the floor is seven and five. There's not too many concerns for what this team could do if things are going wrong. So seven to five is the floor that I see. And that shouldn't be too concerning. Obviously, it'd be disappointing. But seven to five with things going wrong isn't that bad. Uh, Kansas State is in great hands. I think that they have a bright future ahead of them. As long as Kleiman's going to stick around, you're going to have a culture that's in place. The, the Avery Johnson show should be really fun to watch this year. I think you get a full season of him, find the wide receivers that you need, 
and your offense is in good hands. Same thing with the defense. You find certain positions, you find a way to add depth or create depth and discover it on the defensive line, as well as replace Savage and Lee in the secondary. This team's in good hands. A contention for the Big 12 championship is definitely in the cards, and it'll be fun to see how this team responds and how this team matures early in the season and what that means for them long-term.